So there are two general approaches to using imaging, using an X-ray tube, that's what's done in most practices. Pain physicians frequently use what's called X-ray fluoroscopy, uses bony landmarks, and you assume where the location of the soft tissues are, the soft tissues of interest being the nerves or structures that you'd like to avoid. CT, you're actually able to visualize the soft tissues of interest and target, say, the nerve or the facet joint more easily. Now, the downside of CT is the higher radiation dose, potential for higher radiation dose, at least, to the patient. So that brings me to the uh, concept of radiation. So how much more radiation does CT actually um, impart to the patient who's getting, a, say, a nerve block or a facet block? Now, we had an excellent opportunity to look at this retrospectively in our practice with the increasing recognition of uh, radiation. We actually changed our uh, practice between 2009 and 2010. We adjusted our dose parameters uh, such that we targeted our imaging specifically to needle placement rather than diagnostic scans, which were being done routinely before then. So this is showing you different phases of a, a you know, CT-guided injection. Two needles are being inserted, you know, one in the facet joint, one for a nerve block. In this case, a survey phase is done to kind of map out the lay of the land to identify an appropriate trajectory, how I'm going to get my needle in the right spot. Fiducial phase is done, so, okay, I'm going to mark the skin. If I put a needle there, am I, am I, can I get there from here? When I go to the guide phase, I can reduce the dose significantly. All I want to do is see the needle tip. I don't need to see all the little pieces along the way. And the final phase, I may want to increase the dose a little bit more so I can see where the medication was delivered. So these are just between those two years when we adjust, adjusted the dose, specifically in the fiducial and the guide phase during needle placement. And these are our results. We were actually able to reduce our dose by 80 to 90 percent just by simple changes in CT dose parameters. Now, if you look across the literature, the dose varies a lot across studies. Uh, largely because of different techniques over time. I think by, by now the best techniques with CT, the average dose in the lumbar spine is about 3.5 millisieverts. Compare that to an abdominal CT, the dose is around 15 millisieverts. Now another good landmark to com compare radiation to is the background radiation. This is what you get from radon and uh, solar radiation. And background environmental radiation is about 2.3 millisieverts per year. So if I get a CT-guided lumbar injection, on average, I'm getting between one and two times the normal, very low dose I would just get from the environment on average. So in summary, you know, back pain is a common and important problem. I hope I've convinced you. Clinical exam and imaging lack specificity. There's a very limited role, unfortunately, for surgery in the treatment of pain. Uh, the diagnostic and therapeutic roles, remember, I can try to identify a patient, why, which of the findings are causing a patient's pain and how I could potentially treat those with surgery or with injections. Or if patients don't want surgery or other mechanisms of treatment, then I have a potentially therapeutic role of treating with CT-guided injection.